Hey guys, Fearless Front here with another small little update on our racing lawnmower go-kart thing we're building here. Uh, I got the foot all mounted up. Uh, it's got some really nice solid mounts on it. I'll show you some more on that. You got the steering hooked up here on the bottom. Uh, it's not 100% done, but I just wanted to make sure all my clearances were good and that everything lined up and was going to work the way I wanted it to. We got the engine in here with all the accessories removed to try to get that, see if it's going to fit where I want it to. I got a few questions for you guys that I'd really like you to help me with. But first, I want to give a big thanks to everyone that uh, helped me decide on the rear seat support. Looks like we're going to do a custom support. Uh, everybody, pretty much, without exception, voted that I do a custom support instead of getting another one remanufactured that looked like the original. So, thanks to everyone that helped me out making that decision. decision. But, stay tuned, and i got some questions for you. I want to show you some of my goals, um, tell you where I think this thing is going to go in the future, and what I want it to be able to do, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. So like I said, we just got the motor kind of sitting there with all the accessories removed. You can see there's a lot more room in there now than there was. No gas tank, no exhaust, no air filter. But you can also see that she sets pretty much where I want it to. That's pretty much centered within the frame rails there. And you can see here that there's perfect access to this pull cord. And that air filter will sit right here, kind of coming off the side. One of those performance cone air filters, the K&N styles. And on this side over here, you can see we've got just enough room for our clutch, whether we decide to do a torque converter or a centrifugal clutch. And that right there is my first question for you guys. Torque converter, centrifugal clutch. Now, they both have advantages and disadvantages. First one being the torque converter is about $200 to buy brand new. But they have like an infinite gear ratio. I know they have a, a better low end power and they actually re-gear themselves to give you more top end power. So the ultimate goal with this riding lawnmower, racing mower thing is I want it to do roughly 40, 45 miles an hour if that's realistic, but I also still want to have enough power to rip donuts. A lot of people say that may or may not be possible with this Honda Clone engine, but I think it would be possible because the thing's so light and the tires are so small. The other thing about the torque converter is I've read that they only support upwards of 8 horsepower. Now I plan on building this Honda Clone in the future and I'm assuming it will get up over 8 horsepower. So in doing that, I'm not sure if I can still run the torque converter slash Comet Clutch style clutch or if that's going to end up giving me a bunch of problems when I start putting too much power through that thing. So if anyone who has any experience with uh, those torque converters, specifically you T-Man go-karts, I know you do a lot with them. You know, let me know what you think. Do you think if you can put more than 8 horsepower through those things? Or should I go with a centrifugal clutch and a jack shaft set up in the back? And I, then I can kind of play with the gearing that way. So yeah, the long term plans with this motor are going to be to remove this little factory kill switch. I'll probably remove the uh, oil low sensor. I'll cut that right off. And I'll do another key switch along with a tether switch so in case you fall off it kills the motor. The intake, like I said, is just going to be a big K&N cone filter sitting right there on the end. The exhaust, I'm probably going to do a straight pipe header pipe thing that comes out like, you know, at a 90 degree angle and comes straight back out the back with like the trumpet style on the end. Uh, that'll set below the seat, hopefully. But that'll be pretty much it right away. Uh, we'll probably run this thing in its stock form for at least a little while after it gets going before I decide to pull the motor back out and maybe try to change the connecting rod and flywheel and remove the governor and do some other crazy stuff and try to get more horsepower out of it. Now you can kind of get a look at the steering here, the tie rods all hooked up. This all functions perfectly. I made the effort and put nylon bushings between where the metal contacts other metal on these tie rods. You can see there's a nylon bushing there and there's another one down there. This will have a nylock bolt on it. These bolts that are all here are here just kind of temporarily just to keep everything bolted down. But you can see I'm using these Eggcorn style nuts so these tie rods are happy when they're bolted in. So the hood, we've got that all attached now and like I said there's rubber mounts everywhere. This is the one bolt point up at the top and we've got the two bolt points, one there and one over there. And I'll take this hood off real quick and show you all the little rubber mounts I've attached inside here to keep this thing so it won't rattle when this engine's running.
The nut for that bolt is actually welded in, so you only have to hold one side. So here are some of the pieces I'm using for the upper hood mounts. You can see these are actually called like rubber expansion nuts and you're supposed to use these to like bolt in something and they expand as you bolt them together. But we're kind of using them backwards. You can see the threaded brass part there and that works with this bolt. Uh, we got one mounted right there. You can see it just kind of sits there. It's not bolted completely in but um, you can see the bolt just kind of runs up through my box steel and hooks to these mounts. And we have one there on that side and one here on this side. This is where the bolt runs through that actually bolts the top of the hood down. You can see there's another little rubber washer right there on the top of that. And that's actually built with a little piece of angle steel that sits up. You see those are kind of the same height. And that still gives me enough clearance to pull these bushings out if I ever need to change them. Down here on the front, where it bolts down to the front of the frame, we've got these little rubber washers. Um, you can pick all this stuff up at any hardware store, but I just put these in here to isolate the metal from the metal contact because this is going to be painted and that hood is going to be painted and I don't need paint scuffing off and squeaks and rattles when this thing is sitting idling. Also another thing I'm starting to think about is what I'm going to be doing for brakes. Now more than likely when I set up my rear axle on this thing the brakes are actually going to be on the outside of the frame not the inside because I want to push the rear axle as close to the ass end of this go-kart as I possibly can like I want it to set like back here so the sprocket's gonna be you know set in there and the rear disc is probably gonna be seven or eight inches so that's gonna be kind of sticking past that so I want to make sure I've got enough room for all that stuff in there not really sure what I'm gonna do on brakes I'm thinking I'm probably gonna end up having to go through BMI carts and just get like heavy-duty disc and caliper with the hydraulic lines but if you guys are aware of some cheaper brakes uh, from anywhere else that would, you know, essentially help lock the rear axle up on this thing when I needed to stop, you know, bounce some ideas off of me. I'd really rather not try to adapt snowmobile brakes or four-wheeler brakes or something like that. I want to get something that's kind of relatively easy to find and more or less like a standard for go-karts. So if I need to find pads and other rotors and stuff like that, I would be able to find them somewhere on the internet. So unfortunately that's all I have to show you guys for today. Um, not a big update, I'm sorry, but a lot of you guys have been asking what's been going on and I wanted to show you just kind of what's been happening here. But um, please leave your feedback about the brakes, uh, about the torque converter or the centrifugal clutch, any suggestions you guys might have. You know, I don't know entirely what I'm doing here. I'm not going to pretend like I do. I don't usually build go-karts, so I'm relying on you guys to help me out. Thanks a lot for your continued support. Um, it definitely has helped paying the bills. Uh, I don't get a lot of money from my YouTube videos, but every little penny that I get, I dump right back into these projects for you guys. So thanks for the support. I'm um, trying to keep good videos rolling for you guys so you guys have you know a little something to look forward to. But yeah, thanks for watching and leave your feedback below and we'll see you next time.